The story doesn't end here though for the industrial Haber-Bosch process. We can still apply another type of stress to the system to help counteract the effect of the increase in temperature. Let's see how an increase in pressure affects the composition of the gas phase equilibrium. Le Chatelier's principle tells us that by increasing the pressure of a component, the system will shift to consume it. If all the partial pressures are changed through changing the volume of the container, the equilibrium will then favor the side of the reaction with the fewer number of moles of gas. In the case of the Haber-Bosch process, by using a smaller container, which increases the partial pressure of all components, this exchange will shift the equilibrium to the right since there are fewer moles of ammonia in the right-hand side of the reaction. How do we quantify changes due to varying pressures? Well, we will note that the natural logarithm of the equilibrium constant is proportional to the standard change in Gibbs free energy of the reaction. This is defined at one bar, so changes in pressure do not affect K. Even though K doesn't change the equilibrium constant, the equilibrium concentration is affected by changes in pressure. These are calculated using an equilibrium expression. Returning one final time to the Haber-Bosch process, where we are examining how stresses that are applied to the system are basically used to drive forward this industrial process into what we see today. What we saw previously was that we increased the temperature so that we can increase the rate of the reaction. But what that also did was shifted the equilibrium towards the reactants, which is something that was not very good in terms of trying to produce ammonia from this reaction. And so what we're going to explore now is the effect of pressure changes on um, the equilibrium. And so what we're, going to, what we're going to do is we're going to calculate the same thing where we're going to do it now at four times the pressure, still at 463 Kelvin. And we're going to predict the equilibrium composition of the mixture. We will start from the same starting point where we're going to say K is equal to the activity of the ammonia over the activity of the nitrogen times the activity of the hydrogen. And we're going to still write our same ice table where we have nitrogen plus three hydrogens in equilibrium with ammonia. And we have two ammonias. And in this case, in every other problem, we started with one bar of nitrogen and three bars of hydrogen. In this case, we're going to quadruple that. So we've got four and 12. We still have zero in terms of the ammonia. Um, the change in this case is still going to be minus x. This is still minus 3x. This is still plus 2x for the change in each of these components, which means that at equilibrium, the nitrogen is going to have 4 minus x. The hydrogen is going to be 12 minus 3x. And the ammonia is going to be at 2x. So substituting these values into the equilibrium expression, we've got 1.11, which is our equilibrium constant at 463 Kelvin. On the top, we have 2x all squared divided by 4 minus x times 12 minus 3x raised to the power of 3. I can make the same distribution or distribute out the same terms as I did before. So on top, I've got 4x squared. On the bottom, I'm still going to have 4x. Here, because I've got 12 minus 3, well, I can factor out 3 and then raise to the power of 3. I've got 3 times 3 times 3 gives me 27 again on the bottom. And then 12 divided by 3 is 4. 3 divided by 3 is 1. So I get 4x or 4 minus x raised to the power of 3. I can then move the 27 and the 4 over to the left hand side. And so what I get is 7.4925 is equal to x squared divided by 4 minus x raised to the power of 4. And so what I'll do at this point is I'll take the square root of both sides. That leaves me with 2.737 is equal to x over 4 minus x all squared. I can then move this denominator over to the left hand side where I'm going to get 2.737 times 4 minus x squared is equal to x. And then finally what I'll do is I'll distribute or I'll foil, sorry, the 4 minus x squared so I get 2.737, and what I end up with is 16 minus 8x plus x squared. And that's still equal to x. I'm going to distribute in the 2.737, and I'm going to move this x over to the left-hand side. And so what I'll get is 43.792 minus 21.896x plus 2.373x squared minus x, and that's equal to zero. 
Finally, my expression here is going to ultimately be 2.737x squared minus 22.896x plus 43.792, and that's equal to zero. So I'm going to take this expression and then I'm going to plug in the respective values into the quadratic formula. x is equal to 22.896 plus or minus minus 22.896 squared minus 4 times 2.737 times 43.792. All of this part is inside a square root. And all of this is divided by 2 times 2.737. So if I simplify these two expressions, or this expression, I should say, these two parts of this expression, I've got 22.896 plus or minus 6.697, and that's going to be divided by 5.474. And so when I solve for the plus minus and I solve for x, what that gives me is an x that's equal to 2.96 or 5.406. And again, I go back up to my starting point again. Here I've got 4 minus x as the equilibrium concentration for, or pressure, sorry, for the nitrogen gas. And if I were to choose the answer 5.406, then I would get a negative number. And that means that I can immediately then cross off that value, and I'm going to then use the 2.96. And so ultimately what I'm going to get is a nitrogen pressure at equilibrium to be equal to 4 minus 2.96. And what that gives me then is a value of 1.04 bar. I have a partial pressure of hydrogen gas, which is equal to 12 minus 3 times 2.96, which gives me a value of 3.12 bar. And my partial pressure of ammonia that's going to just be equal to 2 times 2.96, which gives me then a partial, or a partial pressure of 5.92. And if we do this quick analysis again, where we find out well, what is the mole fraction of ammonia in this equilibrium mixture, we find that it's now equal to 0 0.59. And so this value is certainly better than the value that we had before when we didn't apply higher pressures. And so what we've basically determined by going through all these different equilibria steps is that we found that at the beginning, at a low temperature and pressure, we would get lots of products. But we found that the reaction went really slowly. So to alleviate that, we raised the temperature and added a catalyst, which then shifted the equilibrium back towards the reactants, and we formed much less products. But then also what we then did was we increased the pressure a lot, and that again caused then a stress that would then force the reaction to produce more products again. And this mirrors exactly what happens industrially. We have a high temperature catalytic process that's done at high pressures. And that's how most of the ammonia, which is then ultimately converted into fertilizers, produced on an industrial scale today. Chemical reactions, like mixtures, minimize their chemical potential until equilibrium is established. The equilibrium constant can be calculated according to the change in standard Gibbs free energy of the reaction being equal to the minus RT times the natural logarithm of the equilibrium constant. Le Chatelier's principle states that when a system is at equilibrium and it is subjected to a disturbance, the composition of the system adjusts so as to tend to minimize the effect of the disturbance. Only temperature modifies the equilibrium constant, and it modifies it according to the natural logarithm of k2 minus the natural logarithm of k1 is equal to the change in the standard enthalpy of the reaction divided by the gas constant r times 1 over t1 minus 1 over t2.